What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I don't think gets spoken about enough in this way. And it's a little bit weird to talk about. You know, I don't expect this to be the most attractive video, but I think it's extremely important. And I'm going to be talking about the relationship between cleanliness of your, your personal belongings and your personal environments as it relates to your mind and the health of your mind and the clarity in your mind. Now, what I'm about to say does not come from a licensed professional. Do not get it confused. I did not study psychology. I did not study cleaning or, or whatever. I don't know. But I did learn this literally from doing it. And I also have had anxiety. I've had depression. You know, I've dealt with the specific mental health issues that I'm about to discuss in this video. But again, this does not come from a clinical perspective. Don't take this as any like, I'm trying to do a disclaimer. I hope y'all just know what I mean. <laughs> Let me just keep the ball rolling. So, you know, I had been thinking about what I would see a lot on social media, people talking about their depression rooms and cleaning up their depression rooms. And then I think back to my childhood. I don't know how many of y'all have seen these shows where it's like hoarders and they usually have some things going on in their mind and in their lives that they haven't really dealt with. And, you know, that's an aspect of what I'm about to discuss, but I'm also going to go into a little bit more depth. And more so, the whole point is encouragement and helping people to learn how they can get to a more cleaner mind, which also equates to a cleaner environment and vice versa. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, then go ahead and keep watching. So as I said, this is related to my personal experience. With me dealing with mental health issues, I also naturally dealt with sanitation and clean cleanliness <laughs> issues. It's not everyone who deals with both. There's a relationship between the two and I think it needs to be addressed because it just happens so often. So I came from being pretty messy, not, I mean, I wasn't like severely messy, severely, you know, dirty. I didn't let it get so far as to have like food in my room for weeks or anything like that. But I did have like a lot of stuff on my floor sometimes, stuff all over my bed. Um, I wasn't really a deep cleaner of anything. And I, at some point I finally decided I was going to take cleaning more seriously, not realizing that this was going to equate to taking my mental health more seriously as well. What I found was that there was a relationship between the thoughts in my head and like the moments where I thought about cleaning or while I was cleaning or the thoughts that I had after I was done cleaning. And it really helped me to realize what exactly was happening as I was cleaning. Like for example, when it came to organization and like just clutter and mess, a lot of the times I was just like, uh, eh, it can wait, right? Like it's not really that serious. I can do it later. Or I might just have the thought where like, you know, even if I clean this up, it's just gonna happen again. Like, is it even really worth it? It's just gonna get just as bad in the next couple of days. And it was more so, just like a pushing things off, deal with it later type of mentality. And I associate that with depressive thoughts and a depressive pattern in my mind. And then when it comes to getting into the like, the nitty gritty grit and grime type of like scrubbing and you know, like actual dirt, what I realized is there was a lot of fear around these things. And it was weird because as I tried to clean these things, I would look at them and just be freaking out like, I hated the dirt. And it's almost like the opposite of what I thought. You know, you might think that you're just a slob, <laughs> but truthfully, you might actually have the opposite effect of like a perfectionist and you're so scared of it not being perfect that you wanna ignore it. That's why perfectionism can be so much of a problem because it's like all or nothing for us. So like I said, there was a fear. I would, I'll be scared looking at the dirt. I would be scared for it to get on me or like to touch it. And then lastly, I would be scared that I couldn't get it all. That was one thing that I really realized was that I hated the thought that it couldn't be perfect. In a new apartment, I don't know why, maybe it's just Atlanta just be slacking, but in both of my apartments that I've lived in here, there was like black mold hiding in the little crevices of like the toilet or the sink or the shower or something. And when I would clean the shower good enough, I would start seeing little pieces like come out, come down the sides. And it was just like freaking gross. And the worst thing about it was that it never stopped. <laughs> like it still doesn't stop. I don't know how to like actually forever get it all, 
but that was one of my fears like I didn't want to think about it I didn't want to touch it and when I had the thought in my head that there's more in there and I can't get it all or the more I rinse the more it's going to come out it's never going to stop that gave me an anxious thought or that was the anxious thought <laughs> in itself and let me just remind y'all what anxiety is it is the fear of the future so I just had a fear that something was going to happen or that something wasn't going to happen so with that in particular I really did have to come to terms with the fact that Perfection is just impossible and as long as I do the best that I can and try to, you know, make sure that I'm getting everything off that I can, I just have to be content with my best. Once I did that, you know, with cleaning things, with organizing things as a whole, after it's done, I feel so confident. Like especially if I do it like first thing, like I, I start my day off really productive and I clean something and I'm like, dang, I really did that, didn't I? And I have not only accomplished something for myself because cleaning your home only affects you or whoever lives with you right i've taken care of myself but i'm also now feeling more confident if someone were to come into my space and see that it's clean it's like there's no shame associated with it and i just know that i can do something that i was scared to do before especially when it comes to those anxious thoughts so it just comes with all this positivity and also mental clarity, which is really, really important. I'm gonna get into that right now. So our mind needs a fresh start. How does our mind get a fresh start? It's when what you're looking at is clear. Think about meditation because meditation usually, I mean, you can do it however you want, but usually people meditate with their eyes closed and that is to block off the distractions of the world around you so that you can focus on the inner being and you can have more inner peace in that moment. Well, what is the easiest way to kind of recreate that with your eyes open is by being somewhere that is clean and open and clear. You can expect that in a particular moment, your mind is gonna reflect your environment and vice versa. A lot of people do like to say you are your environment. I think that that's taken a little far because you can go somewhere, you could go anywhere and you don't just become that, but you might feel the tension if it's not comfortable there, but your home where you are usually comfortable, that is a reflection of what's going on inside of you or in your car or at your in your office or whatever. Wherever you're comfortable is what you can associate with what's going on in your mind in terms of how organized or clean it is. So what can you do? You can either start with the mind or start with the environment, your private personal home, room, car, office, desk environment. I'm trying to be all inclusive here because people have messes in different places. I used to have like a messy room and a spotless car and some people have the opposite. So I really want you to consider all grounds with this. But what I am proposing to you in this video is to clean first and then allow your mind to follow. You can do it the other way around, but Sometimes it's easier to have a clean slate and an open slate that gives your mind more opportunity to release and to process. Literally what you wash from your home, you can wash from your mind. And this is why I realized, because I would clean in silence, not on purpose, it just kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> we'll just do it. But I know most of us will like, we've grown up listening to music while we clean. And that's something that I would do most of the time. But recently I just started cleaning in silence and I would realize what I was thinking about while I was cleaning it would be something that happened two years ago that just made me angry it would be something that I have been replaying in my mind back to back or something that I'm upset about or sad about or frustrated about are the very things that I would be thinking about and there would be the things that I needed to heal from and to release and usually that was happening in the process of me cleaning and so that's why if you really want to know what you need to release or what you're dealing with or holding on to, I would recommend cleaning in silence because you're going to have those thoughts, especially if you're not the type of person who generally overthinks things, but you just more so bury things and maybe even hold grudges here and there. Try it out. Try listening to your own thoughts instead of music while cleaning. And these are a few more things that I wanna to recommend to you if you're trying to make sure that you keep a more clean environment, you wanna do the work in your environment so that you can follow with the work in your mind. These are three more things. So first of all, I wanna recommend you to challenge yourself by deep cleaning one thing. 
I mean, don't just do it once if, if it works out the first time. Like, try to be consistent, like maybe once a month or once a week or however much you can handle. But deep clean something that you wouldn't usually deep clean. Like, for example, scrub the inside of your oven or get behind the fridge or clean out the vents, you know, the air vents. Do something that you wouldn't usually do, but not something that is just like, ah, I don't usually wipe the windows, but it's easy to clean glass. I mean, like do something that might just be a little bit intimidating for you. Do it in silence and see what kind of grime you're scrubbing off of your mind. This is an opportunity to face your fears and an opportunity to get through a mental blockage of some sort. So when you're really deep cleaning something that hasn't been cleaned in a long time or you never think about cleaning it, you're really getting into the back of your mind with that and really, and I wanna stress this, I have to mention this because it's so legitimate because I can hear in the spirit and if you don't know what that means, I can probably explain it later, but I one time was cleaning dishes, I was washing dishes or cleaning out the sink and I heard something and it wasn't about me, it was like my roommate's like childhood issues washing down the drain, <laughs> like quite literally. I know it because it was just too specific for it not to be my roommate, but I also don't exactly 100% know what it was, but still, <laughs> I heard it and it was kind of like, it was almost like a thought. That's kind of how like, if you're hearing something in the spirit, it almost comes out as like a thought, but it's not your original thought. And so that was just a moment of me realizing that I was helping him in that moment to wash down like trauma and just heal from past pain. Be grateful for the people who live with you and clean up after you because they are actually doing work for your mental health and doing that. Just wanted to put that out there. The next point is to commit to always putting something where it goes. If you usually change your clothes and leave your clothes on the floor or throw them in a corner, commit to putting them in a basket, put them in a hamper every time. Or if you're the type of person who eats your food and leaves the bowl in your room, you know, on the nightstand, commit to always putting it in the sink or commit to always putting your dishes in the dishwasher. Just choose something that you know that you can do every time that's not too hard instead of just throwing it wherever you put it, where it goes. This is gonna help you to find the value in doing that thing because the one day that you decide to not do it, you know, you're gonna be like, dang, I should have just put it in the hamper. That would have been so easy. I should have just put the shoes on the rack instead of leaving them by the door. It's so easy. And it helps you to realize how much cleaning you wouldn't have to do if you just put things back. Once you're consistent in that habit to the point where you would never think to not do it, you can go ahead and add another habit on top and eventually get to the point where you rarely ever have to organize or like get clear of messes and stuff. You're really gonna deliver yourself from the environment of chaos and it's gonna keep your mind more organized and less chaotic. And my third suggestion would be to commit to always keeping one thing clean, the best, the most important, the easiest one, it's to make up your bed every day. And not only to make your bed, but keep your bed clear of extra stuff. Like don't have all your clean laundry dumped on your bed and just not fold it and just pick it up off your bed. Like that's not the best. You wanna make sure that there is a place in your environment where your mind can rest just by looking at it. So the clear bed, made up, organized, neat, pretty, that's a good one. Or you can try clearing off the bathroom sink, wiping it down every time, or you can clear off your kitchen calendar. You can always take the trash out of your car and like throw it away. Or you can, even if you're lazy, right? You're not really fully committed to that, but you do have an issue with keeping your car organized. You can just keep taking your car to the car wash and get someone to clean it inside and out. Just try and keep doing that consistently so that you always have somewhere that your mind can be free and yeah. So if you're struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with depression and you are also struggling with keeping a clean environment, push yourself with the cleaning part first. That's just my recommendation. Try it out, push yourself with the cleaning part and your mind will hopefully follow. So yeah, that's it, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed this, if you liked this, then like it and I'll see you next time, bye.